talking of next two albums, moving on to a different genre, kind of. We used well. We used Valkyrie because there's kind of slight electronic influences, so it made sense to use that as the transitional point to um, Ghost, non Paradisi. Which is going into synthwave territory again, as you may have seen from our previous reviews of Perturbator that we like synthwave, so. <laughs> Specifically, sort of eighties dark synthwave, because and Goose has that in lots. Yeah, I th- I think it's because some of our favourite films. You, I mean, in my case, it's sort of like some of my favourite films. Uh, you've got Blade Runner, Alien. Uh, oh, trying to think. Terminator. Terminator Two. Um, well, Terminator Two was the nineties. So it was Blade Runner, wasn't it? No. Blade, Runner's, Blade Runner was 85 or 84. Oh, 82. Jesus Christ, I'm way off. I might as well just get my film credit and throw it in a bin. <laughs> Let's find the John Carpenter and Vandalus. Yeah, it kind of makes sense, all that stuff. Yeah. So. The Thing being a good one. So. Um, now, Ghost Non Paradisi. This is. How to describe it? Well, as with Perturbator, Ghost is known for also being a huge metalhead. Yeah. And it kind of shows here, more so than the first time, I'd say, in the case of, there's a lot of very kind of heavy metal influence here, while still remaining sounding like Synthwave. Yeah, it's one of those cases of, I think, when it comes to Synthwave, or any sort of electronica, the sort I like is the stuff that's influenced by the films of the 80s and heavy metal. The fact that the second track, Nassim Seed, just makes you think of Doom. Yeah. <laughs> the opening kind of thing. Mm. I can play Doom to that. <laughs> but I think of all of the kind of synth with artists I know of, Ghost is arguably the heaviest musically, I'd say. Yeah. A lot of kind of very heavy and very rapid kind of beats. Mm. I, I believe I was... Well, I know I was playing it to the next album we'll cover, but I believe I was playing Fallout 3 whilst listening to Ghost. And that actually... Yeah. Especially when you're dealing with Brotherhood of Steel stuff. But, yeah. um, It's definitely an album that needs to be listened to in its entirety. I'd agree, sir. Because... It feels like... Whilst there's not many vocals... I mean, there's odd vocal interjections and not even full lyrics they're more like quick sort of like oh i have this to add but i need to actually speak it kind of thing hmm there's only three tracks that have vocals anyway yeah i think there's the rest of it uh, i mean obviously non paradisi being based off of dante's inferno yeah it's kind of got the whole super spooky thing going on mm. some of like lake of fire for example comes across sounding very unsettling Kind of appropriate for a song with that title. Yeah. Also worth noting that it does actually have guest vocals from Hayley Stewart, who also did Sentient on a new Perturbator album. Ah. Also with actually vocals on the first Ghost album. Mm. Must have a deal going with blood music. Quite possible. Well, I think probably to kind of just pick them up and thought, okay, you guys are cool, you're doing stuff on your own, don't let a hand, and then just kind of push them through. I will say this much, there are times when the music does get a bit samey, but not too much, you know. There's never a point where you're actually bored by the music. At least, I wasn't. It does help that the album is relatively short as a whole, so... It kind of gets, if it was longer, it may have a chance of kind of dragging it down a bit. Yeah. But the whole length of it is only 48 minutes, so... I was saying it's welcome. It does also have a bonus disc, which comes with a special edition, which has a bunch of extra... Well, it's like four extra songs, plus a couple of extended versions, which is also pretty cool. When, as usual, with Blood Music, you can download it for free off the Blood Music Bandcamp, so go check it out. Yeah, I mean, even though I'm not earning, or barely earning, I still tend... I was sort of like, yep, yeah, I'm going to pay money for these albums, even though I've not listened to them, because I've not heard anything bad from Blood Music yet. I think also with the bonus stuff is some of it's kind of different to the main album. I mean, a song called Amy's Wager, for example, starts out really kind of distorted. It's quite a bit different, actually. It kind of sounds like it's going into some kind of electronic rave more than anything else. Yeah. 
I, I think that kind of that's that works to its advantage, really. Well, that's probably what they were the main album was. Yeah, you know, they kind of focused it around the concept of Dante's Inferno. Yeah. And then got to wine comedy as it is. You know what I mean? Um, but uh, the kind of bonus stuff, it's probably stuff that they thought, oh, it doesn't necessarily fit into the actual kind of concept of the album. But it's cool they knew when they made it while we were going along. So you can have it as a bonus. What's well, this kind of chainsaw sound going on in the first track on the bonus? It's like, yep, this is totally inspired by 80s slasher films. <laughs> it's kind of, it just makes you think, it's kind of, since the start of it, it makes you immediately think of Halloween, so. Yeah, I can hear that. <laughs> Which is thematically appropriate. So, uh, yep, yeah, Ghost, I would probably give it probably a 4.5, which is improvement on the first album, I'd say. I'd give it 4 out of 5. It's one of those... There are occasions where I do find myself just drifting out a bit, but not too much to not be able to go, Oh, wait, I'm supposed to be listening. <laughs> um, yep, it's good. Yeah. And it's just technically free, unless you want to pick it up. So. Well, so you can probably pick it up in a local CD shop. I mean, I managed to find it in my local HMV's recommended for the week section. Huh. Getting super mainstream there. That's especially surprising for HMV. Not so much my local store, because the amount of times I've seen metal in the kind of recommended sections. But I think I think uh, like this then had Dark Throne on the front page. Huh. Fair <laughs> dues. Uh, I'm pretty sure one of the other works has a huge metal head, so. Mm. <laughs> Uh, next, we've got Tommy86, Transhumanism. Also Blood Music, also a synthwave. Mm. Also featuring bonus collaborations with Perturbator and Dentemnus. Now, I definitely was listening to this whilst playing Fallout 3, and it was one of those, yeah, this really is getting me in, into the mood of things. Uh, the only problem is, I actually didn't realise when the album restarted. <laughs> I was so into the music that it wasn't even registering. <laughs> I think, unlike Ghost, which is kind of going towards the much more heavy side of things, this seems to be focusing more on the kind of ambience. Yeah. Kind of creating soundscapes. Yeah, I de I definitely say this is a good. This was a good album for relaxing me. It felt very easy to just ease into things. It's kind of I can think of if I put it on and just kind of lay there in my bed at night with no lights on, which I occasionally do because I'm like, kind of weirder. Um, I can imagine kind of just being able to see visions of like futuristic cyber cities and stuff. Wait, like, totally you don't do that anyway? Well, I do, but this very much helps that. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, the songs themselves do flow seamlessly into each other. That's why I had a, wait, the album's restarted? Huh? Because it... <laughs> I think it's... It's got a benefit of they flow into each other, but they also have their own kind of distinct styles, so which just stand out whilst also being a kind of collective piece. Yeah, it kind of has a bit of an Ouroboros effect. I mean, I don't know whether Tommy86 did any work on Hotline Miami, but I can see like half the tracks working on that. I wouldn't like to say. Well, you don't care for Hotline Miami, but I played it a lot, so. <laughs> this also made me think quite a bit of the music from Unreal Tournament a little bit in places, which is weird. I've not played Unreal Tournament enough to really comment. I've played like 368,000 hours, so yeah. That quite possibly is not an exaggeration. Yeah, it probably is my most played game I've ever played, so yeah. A bit like me with Red Alert 2. Yeah. Or Day of the Tentacle. I've played it constantly since, like online. It's still active online, like right to today, you know, it came out. I don't know. So. <laughs> yeah, I think. Thinking about it, it's probably because of games like Unreal Tournament, in your case, and the various Command and Conquer games, in my case, that have made us such fans of um, Synthwave and all that sort of thing. Hmm. It's only just a case of I always kind of like that time. I, mean, I said earlier on in this review, I was like, oh yeah, I like it because like things like Vangelis and John Carpenter. Then I said, you know, playing Hotline Miami kind of just made me think. Hmm, there's new stuff coming out with this kind of genre. I'm gonna go find it. Hmm. And then I did. And the rest, they say, is oh god, my mind is melting. <laughs> oh god, my wallet is melting with all of these synthwave albums I'm buying. Um, overall score, this is going to sound a bit weird because whilst I wouldn't technically give it a higher score, 
I do prefer transhumanism to non-paradisi. What are you going to go with? Um, uh, might as well. Seeing as I've done weird point somethings anyway, I might as well say this I'd give a 4.3 out of 5. <laughs> yeah, probably, I'm going to give this a 4.6. 